What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? Who do we got in the building today? Welcome back to the studio, Ritika. Hey. Let's Ritzy go. Hey, Ritzy Pablo in the house. I'm so excited to be here. By the way, I said this last time. <laughs> this is my second podcast. This place, you guys... Freaking amazing. <laughs> it is so nice. You got the velvet. You did literally and say. And I love the velvet. I remember. I can say this word for word too, bro. I memorized it at this point. Yes. I appreciate the love, Ritzy Radio. I appreciate you coming back, bro. Because it's you. It's kind of, again, I told you in the prep, it's a little weird when we re-ask people to come on because we don't know people's schedules and mm-hmm. stuff. So it really helps that you're on today. Because we you. miss you very much. We did. Thank and you. the last episode Ritika was on was episode twenty. Three. We are like 150 something episodes in. So welcome back. How have you been? Thank you for having me, first of all, because I have had a journey. I mean, who has not, right? The pandemic came in through this funk a lunk in our lives. And I think I think this is the perfect time for me to like get back into the game. So with my social media, it's been a roller coaster. I mean, like consistency is key, but I have not been consistent. And I think like lately, I'm finally feeling like myself again. So thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited to be here. Perfect timing, Ben. <laughs> no, honestly, I, <laughs> in my note. head, I was like, on that note, yeah. yeah. Perfect time to get you in here. Yeah. But you are uh, pretty active on social media. I see you on there um, all the time. And I'm a fan of your content. Thank you. know, Especially you. with Ritzy Radio. I remember we were doing a lot of prep in the first time you were around. Mm-hmm. And um, I, when you told me about your Enough's Enough venture that you got going Thank on, you, I Romita. seen it on a picture recently <laughs> where you said that on your story. You're like, Enough's Enough. Tell me more about that now. How do you feel um, with like what you have going on? And what sparked that um, that picture again? Because like mm-hmm. for me, right, every time I think about like when I'm lagging on something, I swear to God, I think about enough's enough. I'm like, oh. dude, at this point, bro, like I've gave myself a million and seven excuses on why I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. Like Neil and I talk about this all the time. There's certain aspects <laughs> of even this show and this podcast where we're lacking, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Where, when, whether it comes like on the clip section of what we got going on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And at one point it brings you so much stress where you're like, you know what? I'd rather just do it and say it at this point than just like keep pushing it off because Mm -hmm. that almost makes me more stressed. Can we Mm -hmm. talk about the law of detachment a little bit today? Because I, these recently said this to me and Ritika, you and I were getting our nails done together. Mm -hmm. When you brought this up, I did mention this, um, this like, consistency piece right mm-hmm. like how you, you mentioned this girl on tiktok who like didn't even know what she was doing she wasn't even a creator but her consistency mm-hmm. is what made her successful mm-hmm. so i'm seeing that a lot in you lately which is inspiring to us too i know we talk about it all the time right. like she posts i post my youtube and she was like oh i love this and i'm like your turn like go go on there so mm-hmm. it's like how is it it's just so hard to do everything with everything that we are doing but how's right. it been you know i think i love that you mentioned the tiktok because just when we got our nails done whenever that was <laughs> The girl posted a TikTok about this girl literally said that she wasn't a creative, you know, and like Neil and I and at least you two were such creatives. And so I think like we get so in our head about being perfect and being perfect. And we want the lighting right. We want the picture right. And a lot of times the people don't even care about those things. Right. And so when I saw this video, the girl said that she wasn't a creative, but she's very good at being consistent million followers on TikTok, doing thriving, thriving on Instagram. And that's where I think people who are very much in their craft and they get in their head and they want perfect results, they have this image in their head. I think that's where we get stuck. And that's like a disservice to what we're trying to do, right? And so I think when it comes back to like the enough's enough thing, I mean, we have one life. Can you like, let that soak that soak that in? Like, you know, when you're playing Mario, you have like three lives. You like, I got two more lives. It's fine, right? We have one life. Tell that to 50 Cent. Tell that to 50. I've <laughs> shot nine times. <laughs> Dead he, ass. He, he's a rare one. He's okay? a rare one of those. No, but I totally, I feel you on that. And I tell Neela this all the time. I'm like, yo, I have one life to live. I have no idea when it's going to be cut short. Hopefully it mm. doesn't. Um, but I do definitely want to do something that makes me happy and lights mm-hmm. that fire under my butt. That's like, yo, mm-hmm. you have purpose, a sense of purpose. And I find myself a lot sticking to that idea of perfection. And Neela and I talk about this too when it comes mm-hmm. to stuff that we're doing on the more creative side, like you said. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're chasing this sort of perfection. And when you kind of... Um, when you miss the mark, it really makes you feel like garbage sometimes to the point um, where you 
kind of like, oh, should I be doing this? Mm -hmm. But I think people are fixated on the end product. Like a lot of people um, try to emulate that end product when they look at other people, other mm -hmm. influencers and TikTokers, and they fail to see the growth and the progression and stuff. And even today, I found something about our podcast that I wasn't doing for the last like year and a half, or Neela mm -hmm. and I weren't doing for the last year and a half, where we're like, holy shit, this is the growth piece. Mm. These are the times where it's like, you're growing and growing and you're finding yourselves in these situations to grow even better. Mm. But know that when you're not doing something that's in your eyes perfect, it's okay. And there's room for growth and there's room to like, get it to where you are and people fall off the wagon in that growth mm. part, yeah. in that part where you're growing. See, when I love that you said that because it's always very, very good to have elevation right like to elevate 10 percent growth victoria's secret ceo lex lex westner he did say that because there was no competition i used to work at victoria's secret by the way <laughs> <laughs> there was no competition right for victoria's secret because there was a number one yeah. bra company but even then he always like made this goal for us to be 10 percent better every year with ourselves Right. Uh, I say us. I'm, I don't work there anymore. But I, I mean, I mean to say for that company when we were there, yeah. when I was there, 10 percent better. And I remember thinking when I was 19 years old, I was like, what? We want to beat ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that stuck to me. And it's so true to be beat our version of ourselves to be better. Right. And so like consistency is key, but always finding rooms to grow, the room to grow is so important, right? And so like, I love the fact that you said, yeah, like you guys have been really consistent with this show. And I'm so proud of that because that's, that's so love you. important. We did get a comment recently too. with somebody, right? somebody mentioned like, um, who was it? The Chris Dover yeah. guy, shout out to you again. Uh, he did say like how, like we're so, he was impressed or something by how much we're, we're posting. And um, I think that's the consistency is the main component, I mm -hmm. think within, anything that like really really makes something successful like even if it's not like compensating in the aspect of like views or right. subscribers you know but it's not if you focus on that in my opinion too much it's mm. going to take away from the general thing that you actually are producing the creativeness right. the, the, the the content you know the production that you have what you are working with it takes away from that the hard work you do day to day that actually will eventually translate it because mm -hmm. as human beings, we are always focusing on the instant satisfaction right. aspect, but truthfully the progress to get there and like the, the process even is, is actually just as beautiful. You know, you have the waves where we're like, I literally texted him the other day and I was like, I'm, I've sat all day behind my camera. I've charged my camera. I've literally mm -hmm. been watching YouTube. I don't know what it is. What's wrong. I can't mm -hmm. get myself to film. And he's like, dude, it's fine. It's just a wave. Like, d like remove mm -hmm. yourself from that energy. Take a, like, like take a walk, come back to it. And I did. And once I sat there and I actually, even though I wasn't feeling it and I started doing it five seconds into it, I was like, okay, this is where it's at. I know why I'm doing it. Cause I, I, I removed myself from just like thinking about the outcome and more so just focusing in the present and doing what I love to do. And it made it so much more significant. I feel like, yeah. I don't know. It's an I, interesting. I completely agree with that. And I think the, the main most essential part that we should all have, especially with creatives, right? Because mm. Um, there's a certain segment of society mm. that is the creative side of the world, working world, right? Where people have these jobs that are often not just the uh, typical nine to five things that they're doing, right? And there's a lot of stress that comes behind that, right? Um, and I think the biggest part of it is having this like almost this mental filter that you have to have mm. over everybody else in the world, mm. right? Because it boils down to the people that you surround yourself with, the environment that you're in every day, because let's be real, right? We don't, 99% of our friend group or the people that we're around, even our, down to our family and stuff, aren't doing what we're doing, right? Right then and there, that's a setback, right? Because every time you talk to these people, they're not gonna be aligned with what you're doing. Of course, they're gonna support you, but they don't really get it, right? So then when you don't receive that, applause at the end of the day or you don't receive the feedback that you want or you find yourself in these situations where you're having these conversations and they don't align with what you're doing it often sets us back tenfold so you have to have this like it's like a water filter right mm -hmm. you filter all out of the negatives and then you drink the good shit right the <laughs> alkaline shit right Yay. and i think that's like the biggest key because a lot of people aren't able to differentiate the bs from like 
the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially, and that's the biggest, um, most integral piece in the growth of a creative is being able to filter out the bullshit mm -hmm. and keep going. Yeah, even because if you're not seeing what you want to see even right off the bat, exactly. even two years in. Like, it, we're two years in. Right. And, like, already where we're at with the podcast is so, like, humbling for what it even is, you know? Mm. And we're, like, always talking about if this is, like, he, we'll text each other every subscriber. Mm. And, like, literally, it's literally just a number, right? And, like, even that little, like, piece just reroutes us as to why we're doing it to begin with just because how much we enjoy it. And it's, like, so you can only imagine the progression down the future, but it's, like, the consistency aspect, right? Just it, it won't fail you. Mm. There's no way you won't do it even if you, you're doing it ten, for 10 years and you've been consistent. It's bound to be successful eventually. Like, the possibility. If you just can't stop. You can't mm -hmm. stop, you know? If you have the time and patience, do it. I mean, it's worth it, yeah, in my opinion. Sure. I'm so proud of you guys because that's the thing. The first step is to get out of your head, right? <laughs> it's the hardest it so, thing to get it's over. The hard, it's the simplest concept, but the hardest thing to do. Get out of your head. Get out of this, like, mental breakdown that every single creative person non-creative person does that to themselves but why i want to understand why i think it's, is it our generation is it just because we have so many options like i wonder why i feel like our generation is so much in our head we're definitely a lot more complicated than like our parents in terms of our parents like went to war and we're sitting here like tripping off of the So we're most. basically kind of soft. <laughs> no, we're soft for sure. And like I do think that that's a great question and really puts things into perspective in mm -hmm. terms of like the why. I think a lot of it has to do with just trying to be everything else that everyone is right. as opposed to just that originality you have as an individual and holding on to that because the most successful people especially these creators are the people who are their their authentic self and have remained original and they flourish just based off of that that's their niche that's their technique you know versus going in front of a camera and doing what someone else is doing that may not work for you mm. you know so i think that's and it's also the mm -hmm. amount i mean i'm not gonna lie i was watching um a, a youtube uh makeup guru who was one of the first that i actually started watching 15 years ago she was like the og in the game and she was still making youtube videos at this point you know and like i look at her her growth and progression compared to like all these other people who like like skyrocketed in the last year right alone from tiktok and stuff and it's like their generation the ogs didn't have a lot of competition but like now for us right like everyone's doing it everyone's literally doing it and it's everyone's actually TikTok not weird famous. anymore. it's not weird if you're a content creator anymore it used to be at one point no one got it right like you're a youtuber what are you doing no one understood it but now it's actually very normal because everyone is doing it but that that's the problem that everyone's yeah. doing it you know it's, it's too accessible yeah, yeah yeah i feel like you know recently i just thought about this i was driving and i was like you know how everyone's like Oh, the top 1%, right? You want to be the top 1%. The top 1% of the world's pop population is 7 million. Yeah, <laughs> so instead crazy. of saying top 1%, think top about seven. being top 7 million yeah. of yeah. the world. We can be part of that. Yeah, for think, sure. Like changing perspective, right? And so like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, YouTubers and this creative side is the top 1%. But I mean, to get better, to get on the other side, to maximize, to elevate, if we are striving to get there and that's our goal, then we don't, we don't need to think about one, the number one. We need to think about number seven million. No, Bro, that's, that's a lot of people. It's crazy to think. Do you guys think that with our, like for my psyche, right? Mm -hmm. I come from a family who immigrated from a third world country, Literally. right? And they took, well, our family took on like blue collar, like, hard work like put in the work type jobs and this new generation and this doesn't just go for immigrants and stuff this is just in general mm -hmm. we have this generation that is pushing those boundaries on what you can and can't do and you had the previous our parents and stuff that were like look you got to get a job here like in tech or mm -hmm. become a doctor or become a lawyer and that is already just a mental block going into being a creative person or being mm -hmm. going into something like this is already a setback because you already you're you're pushed in front of this like spotlight that's like okay well you're bound to fail because we don't really do this we don't come from people who do this kind of stuff you know and a lot of people i see a lot of successful people like the kids of like people who are actors and actresses and nba players and stuff almost every nba player dad that has a son their sons go to the nba yeah. their sons weren't gonna th their dad wasn't gonna be like well you know it's very hard to get into the nba son 
because they made it, yeah. right? They made it to the NBA, so it was possible for their children to make it to the NBA, right? Yeah. The possibility was there, and I feel like as a parent, I feel like it comes through upbringing too to tell your kids like, hey, you can achieve this goal if you set these realistic goals, but here is what's going to probably come. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have a lot of stuff that you probably fail in until you become successful, and I think a lot of that dialogue stems from that relationship you have with the people that you're around every single day you know mm -hmm. people will tell you well this is probably not going to work because of this because of this because of that well tell me something that will help me rather than just break my shit down and you're giving me the facts like you said instead of saying there's only one percent of creator content creators that make it Nah, bro, there's like 7 million people there's that make it. There's definitely enough to go around, let's be honest. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There is no way that you're not going to make the cut in terms of like, oh, we're at capacity. Like, there is enough to go around For because sure. every day I'm seeing the number of... The opportunity in the industry is very much there, and it's only growing. Mm. It is saturated, but it's open for all. If you do the work, you put in the work. There are those individuals who like kind of, you know, off the work of someone else or light work or like less effort go viral and get kicked off and like but you know like it peaks for them there's but no like, longevity in that though there's not it's not and it's like it happens so fast and sure. as quick as it comes that's how fast it can go you mm -hmm. know so it's like i think timing but for me again i'm a very process and structure oriented person where i have to like there is no way that at episode five we could have kicked off success and been at a million because i would not have been able to mm. like basically navigate through that because of every day is an experience for us as we're going with this and this is all self-taught self-made and like we are only getting better. So it's not a necessarily a fact of like, oh, it's taking too long. It's like, no, we're only getting greater. So when we get there, we will be the best. And I told you this, like you just said, the pool will open up, you know, when yeah. we have, we'll have more visibility to people and things. Mm -hmm. And we'll actually also be at the peak at the best of our own nature to be able to, to be in that environment, I feel like. And I, I'm a big like believer of timing and like I always look at everything as an experience in terms of it's just not the right timing I have to be in the right space eventually it'll happen and if it'll happen it will happen there's it's inevitable right like if it's meant to happen it'll happen but I also believe that with the work and dedication and the consistency mm -hmm. um why not it does hurt though why not I ain't gonna lie <laughs> it does hurt it's like, this so, is premium that's why content yes, people like, premium there's like Velvet. Spotify right now, we have discounted prices. Honestly, you you're, you'll <laughs> buy us out on a discount if you buy us out right now. No, but in all honesty, it does. Uh, like, I can sit here and cap, bro, and be like, well, yeah, like, you got to just work hard and believe in it. And then when you see other people, like, I'll I'll talk to Neela, right? And I'm looking at, like, like Neela and I will talk about the most stupid, like, nobody cares. Like, Ratika said, like, nobody cares if it's a little more, like, better quality. Like, nobody's going to be, be able to tell. But there's other people where you'll go on TikTok and they have 17 million followers and they're <laughs> releasing content. And I'm like, dude, I know that's totally staged. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it hurts, bro, because you're putting all this effort in this authentic effort. And then it's like, OK, well, maybe they just had a big break. And if no, I'm putting I think this it's just the quality of their audience. I'm sorry, because the real will recognize real. And it, <laughs> that's true. That says a lot about their audience. If you're not able to see through a stage piece of work and you find that entertaining, then there is something wrong with the generation, because yeah. I would like to watch thing, watch information and content worth my time not something that i'm like oh nice setup you know so like you expect your stuff to be seen by a million people mm -hmm. and then when you don't get it you're like well maybe it's me maybe maybe i gotta change something and you have to be uh like a smart individual to be like look bro i have to i have to see the criticism a little bit because at first okay ritika i'm gonna tell you tell we me. get hate comments all the time you know what i'm saying and we leave it up there we leave it yeah honestly that's how i feel hey, yeah and i'll find you guys bro ips vpns all that shit don't matter but no we get this all the time and as much as it hurts us we do want to take it as like constructive criticism mm. maybe we can get better because you have to have that mentality right there's consistency there's willingness to get better and receive criticism and there's that third piece of being authentic and just doing what you got to do and like neela said back to that thing of law attachment of law of detachment so like i've been fixated ratika mm. on this idea of law of attachment right right whatever your brain is focused on in that moment and before i get into that I, I saw something and I read a book where, and I don't really read books too often, uh, <laughs> where it said um, your your present thoughts are what's going to change the future 
and your past thoughts are what you're living in right now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like your previous thoughts of how you were thinking before and stuff is what you're living now and your present thoughts is what your future is going to entail. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that is that plays into a lot of attachment and detachment because like I've been fixated on this like idea of um, the law of attachment and whatever like I'm emphasizing in my life and whatever I'm focusing on my life is what's going to come into fruition later on. right? Right. But alongside that law of attachment i've read now there's this thing called law of detachment and that's like have you ever heard of the the saying let go let god like Mm -hmm. let go let god right it's sort of the same thing to where like you just do what you're doing Mm. you don't focus on the end result how many subscribers how many followers how many people are listening to your radio show yeah you just do and then you just let Mm. and then what comes from that comes from that eventually and i think that's an That's integral so portion mm-hmm. because like what what sets you back? It's that idea of like, oh, this isn't being reciprocated the way I want to. People aren't receiving this information the way I want to. What's going wrong? Right. Instead of just letting it be. There, you know what? I love that you mentioned this because I started my YouTube channel earlier this year. Have not been consistent. I'm not going to lie. You're human. And have not had the strong numbers and I gave up. A few months later, a company that I can't mention right now because the show is still going to come out reached out to me and they went through my Instagram, which Instagram is a little bit better than my, you know, YouTube went through my Instagram and they clicked on my YouTube video. And even though it doesn't have that many like views or followers or anything like that, they saw my work and they hired me for this project. And the fact that they did this and saw my video if I didn't put that video out there, I would not have this project. And I can't talk about it yet because it's going to get released in the next three, four weeks. But opportunity of a lifetime. I, they would not have found me. They would have just thought that I was a, you know, model, photo girl, did not know that I had this like personal- yeah. personality that I was able to express in YouTube. And they saw that and they were like, we want to hire you. And then I got hired and I did this whole thing. Such a cool experience. I can't wait to talk about it. But the point is, is that they would not have hired me if they not did they, if they didn't see my YouTube channel. Every piece of work is an opportunity right. that can could get exactly. discovered. You said this to me, yeah. and I that resonated. And that law of detachment, mm-hmm. which you just said, is so true. That's the mentality I'm on now. Like, I post, I hit all the dots. I love it. I go watch it, and I let it go, and I just keep doing it because I'm focused on doing it versus. Mm what I'm going to be, what's received of it, you know? Of course, it's who doesn't want to get the acknowledgement because you're putting in all the work. Like, making videos, editing, all that stuff, it's a whole day's worth of work. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he knows. And, like, focusing on the actual passion you have behind the work that you're doing, right? You love creating content, no matter what the content is. If it's fashion, whatever, I love doing makeup. So holding on to that, that itself will, will bloom on its own because you're just going to keep going back to it and doing it and doing it. And that right there will hold you consistent. Hey, listen, I'm a Leo, I just love watching myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have you. Leo. I hate Leos, man. They are. I love you. But Leos really are obsessed with themselves. I literally they? watch the my men. story. Yes. The men are crazy. Yes. But I watch my story like probably 20 times a day. And I'm like, oh, this is such a this good is story. So far. No, like, but I feel so that. I feel that too. But that is a thing though. Like they're so into themselves. You have to be a, a, a fan of yourself. Bro. You have to be. How do you there expect you everybody else to be a fan of you? Exactly. I think in, with, with work that you're creating, I'm a fan of all of our work, you know? Like I think I will rewatch it. I'm sure at some point I'm like, I, I'm looking at it and somebody else is like, damn, this bitch keeps posting the same thing. I don't post it for them. Nope. I post it for myself, I you know? There like, you go. Half of the stuff that I'm posting is just for my own like, like uplifting, I feel like. Do you guys ever like watch your stuff again in a different perspective? Like I sometimes pretend like I'm like, okay, if I was this person, like how would I <laughs> How like, would I feel about 100%? All the time. 100%. I have like five different personalities I go through when I watch myself. You know what's funny though? It's so going like going viral and especially like, and I know we're fixated on this content creation aspect and I I promise we're going to like veer off of this, but it's pretty simple to go viral. I would Mm. say the blueprint is there, right? You can go look at previous videos, you know, like remember where there's this like whole thing with fake pranks Mm -hmm. and like, like you can go and you can release a piece of content that's not authentic to you and you can go viral. And I, I talked to Neela about this, right? Because a lot of people, right? When we would post our content, people would be like, 
well, dude, this person's going viral. Why don't you just do this? Right. And it takes away from that authenticity mm -hmm. piece. And that almost takes away from the fun of what you're posting because you want to post the content that you want to post and you want people to receive it in a good way. But if you're posting shit just to post it and for it to go viral, it won't feel but as good. But how easy is it to go viral, though, nowadays on um, on TikTok? Like, easy I feel money. like TikTok is and like, correct me if I'm wrong or if you feel the same. I feel mm -hmm. like TikTok is just like a platform of trends where mm -hmm. everyone's just doing the exact same trend in their way and and, so and their true. way not even their way it's just it's a different person doing the same thing and going viral for it because it's based off the algorithm populates it off the song or the audio or the filter or whatever even how it may many be. seconds it is this Downtown. timing so tiktok so is just true. like it's become a world where it's no longer celebrity it's just like you know content creators on the street now like it's just everybody is you have the opportunity to become a known face within that community just based off of trends it's all trend related at least tiktok is was i, I here when i i don't remember if this happened when i came here did i talk about the tiktok coffee table situation yeah, yeah. I talked about that already. Did Just you? give us a reminder real quick. Basically, I was cleaning my house. Okay. One day I was like cleaning my house and I was like, you know what? I have a cool coffee table. My coffee table is dope. It's pretty cool. Right? <laughs> I have a fridge in my coffee table. And I was Literally. like, let's let's record this. And of course, sounds, you copy someone's sound, because that's what TikTok is. I put a sound on it that was like about adult money. I did a little like, you know, showing my coffee table. I started cleaning and I just went to bed. Next morning, one million views. She's literally a million. Casual. Like when I woke up, I got one, one million How views. How did that feel? Be honest. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my lanta. Yeah. I was so shocked. The fact that my coffee table maybe at the at that moment, I was so excited. But as it started progressing and like everyone just talked about my fucking coffee table, I was like, bruh, don't you want to look at my paint? Yeah. <laughs> don't you want to look at me? Nobody cared about me. They only cared about my freaking coffee table. And yeah, it was cool to see that viral. It, it went up to tw 12 million uh, views. And so, and then I got 19, 20K followers on TikTok, all because of this coffee table. But the point is, is that it was really strange for me to get viral off of this coffee table, but the videos that I would spend what hours, been, exactly. hours doing nothing, nothing. And it was so strange for me because I did not have any effort on this coffee table TikTok. And I started becoming this coffee table. Yahoo News made an article about this coffee table. Like it was so freaking crazy. Yeah. And the point is, is that like, is that what our culture is all about? Like all this, like, you know, quick trends, quick, like exciting things. And yeah, I got followers and this and that, but no one cared about me mm -hmm. and like who I am. For sure. Why did you follow me? If you don't care about me, you followed me because I have a cool coffee. You table? should have just turned your page into a furniture page at that point and started <laughs> posting everything else in your apartment. I should have just popped open in the yeah. coffee table. I wasn't even in the video. My feet made it in the video because yeah. I put my feet in it. Like, cross my legs. That's actually smart. A lot of dudes are into feet. I don't know. I why. Don't know. I know. why I did I do why. that shit? But I should have been in the coffee table. Like, yeah. Ritzy this Paula. is me. Hello. <laughs> no. I hear is the owner of the table. That's how it is, though. Like, I've seen that. Uh, it, there's like almost this trend on TikTok to where um, the people that, like, one video will go viral mm. and then everybody. They'll be like, okay, I got this newfound fame. Like, I have yeah. so many followers now. And then they'll post, like, another video of something that they want to do. Nothing. And it'll only get, no. like, five views. Mm -hmm. Right? And then people will be like, <laughs> we'll post the drawers of this. Or, like, post, like, the, the drawers of the coffee table. Like, this is what we want to see. Yeah. And, um, like, in specific, there's this girl on TikTok, right? I don't know if you guys have seen her, but she makes dorm uh, dorm room dinners like all she yes. does on tiktok you see it it's a small little girl right yes. and she just makes dinner in her dorm room right mm -hmm. and i went and i looked at all of her other videos and nobody wants to see anything mm. else of what she does except for her dorm room dinners that's why and then so i crazy. and i go on her instagram right and yeah, she has like, you can see it. She probably has like 20K followers, which probably jolted once she posted mm -hmm. that TikTok, right? But then her views and her likes and all of that don't translate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's another key component in knowing when how to translate that sort of uh, a huge rush of people into something that you want to do. A lot of people don't have like that business hat that they can put on and be like, well, how can I make? 
Jeez. How yeah. can I make this a lot of, profitable? No. You know, exactly, bro. <laughs> and people don't get that portion. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to continuously do this. But you're you're in a pickle, bro, because yeah. you're like, okay, well, I can continue po continuously post this like stuff that people like, or I can slow roll it and kind of slowly show these people that I got more to Ritzy mm -hmm. Pablo than anything more than just little table coffee table exactly. i'm an onion i have so many different hats <laughs> layers whatever you want to call it and it's so unfair that our generation just cares about what you're good at and that's it that's your little what is it called niche yeah for niche. sure the hell that's like hard. no i got like five different personalities 100 percent. and i think people are starting to realize that like even when it comes to like your personality and stuff i feel like more and more people are straying away from like that authentic piece more so than going into what's like trending mm -hmm. and what's kind of popping and shit it's because true. the I'll, younger generations i feel like i think it's so all too. they know and it's you can't blame them because they've been like so well-rounded in the social media they've grown and, and they've developed through social media so it's all they know they don't know what it's like to just be an individual anymore i think everything everyone is surrounded by having to be this icon this this person this content person this like influencer whatever mm -hmm. and realistically i'm pretty sure if they were to take a step back and ask themselves half the things that they're doing is probably not even things that they enjoy but it's because the world now revolves around you know the amount of likes and views and subscribers that you have and and it i mean i mean we're about this life but i, I think with the younger generations at least with tiktok like it's wild to me the power it has like I follow this girl, Emily Mariko. She's... Oh, bro. Yeah, I'm obsessed. It's the eating girl, I'm right? Obsessed. She, her oh sushi, kiwi mayo, salmon, Where she wraps it. Bowl. <laughs> oh, gosh. I saw it for like two weeks straight, every video. Everybody was doing it. And I couldn't believe like the power that she has. Mm. Her like influencer page, because she was always... She actually used to work a corporate tech job. I think it was Facebook, actually, because she, she talked about it. Because she lives in San Francisco. Oh, she's she in the is. South Bay. and She's popping. Ritika, 8 popping. million followers like this. every video is getting like 9 million followers and they're like aesthetically pleasing just like no music behind she just makes food chops it everything's like perfect like her life is perfect and she you know? cle like clearly just <laughs> smiles like, creepily yeah and like well, yeah <laughs> so there's all these like spin-offs that they make about her but like it's insane like how overnight it just drifted but at least to her like she popped off for doing what she actually enjoys doing because she it's her day to day which now I'm sure like now everything has a motive behind it because you're now she's famous off of it i watch her videos i love it you know they're like therapy in a way yeah. like very therapeutic but like it's wild overnight how mm -hmm. like and she talks about it and like she'll literally like her her salmon rice bowl it was all over the world like yeah. everyone was doing it and i was like damn like you could just be one person that could create one thing that one person likes and it really just takes like word of, it's like word of mouth on the internet it's wild to me but you now know? it's too you, much power have you guys seen like sort of now like we used to be in this segment of like watching tv right mm. watching tv shows and watching like the news and watching all these people and now nobody's watching the news and tv no more commercials what is, what is commercials? what is a commercial no. No. Not Hulu, no Absolutely. ads. Hulu, no ads. <laughs> there's YouTube. There's content creators. And the reason why I think is more so knowing you can relate to content creators because they're mm -hmm. almost like you, right? This girl, Emer Emily, Emily Marika, yeah. right? She was just a regular girl that showed you how she was making this certain mm -hmm. dish. She popped off because of it. And now with she's making ice. with the ice in yeah. there, right? In the like, microwave yeah. and everything. And, um, She's lucky I don't eat salmon because I would have tried it. Y'all making me hungry right now. I didn't have dinner today. It's fire. Oh, yeah. And like people are like, yo, I can relate to this yeah. girl. You feel me? And I want to watch her because this is more credible than any other TV show yeah. uh, with millions of dollars worth of budget and yeah. any news channel with millions of um, budget that's like just straight up capping and stuff. Have you guys seen what happened to that guy that was a CNN anchor? Do you guys mm -hmm. know the Cuomo guy? No. So basically... There's this guy, his name is, um, there's Andrew Cuomo and I think Chris Cuomo, I want to say his name is. Le Cuomo. Isn't uh, that the mayor's name? Yeah, yeah. so Andrew <laughs> Cuomo is, I think, the mayor of, of New York or something like go. that, right? Yeah, and then his brother. Is the CNN yes. guy, right? So recently, he just got fired from CNN. <gasps> yeah, he's the no, younger one, right? Why? Why and he, uh, he got fired because his brother, who's the governor in politics and everything in New York, um, got 
accused of sexual harassment, right? Oh, damn. From like many of his aides and stuff. A lot oh, of his shit. aides, had, like four of his um, aides stepped up and said, this guy groped me, did creepy ass things to me. And his brother, right, went and tried to like almost find dirt on these girls <gasps> to use again. And oh, keep shit. it G, bro. Got That's, to see it through. Hey, got to see it through, my boy. <laughs> you handling your boy? You got your brother's you back. That? You really? Yeah. Guy? I love it. Got to see it through, my boy. But, okay, in all honesty. <laughs> no, but, like, that's what it becomes, where you got to put protect yourself. You got to protect your brother and shit. But, though, when it comes to, like, sexual weirdness, <laughs> no, right? Yeah, it's a little you're, weird. you're a guy who is uh, in politics. He mm. talks about politics a lot. And you're a, a famous newscaster on CNN, right? And on CNN, and when you're watching CNN, I know the reason why my parents watch CNN and shit is because they're like, these guys are telling the truth. Mm -hmm. They're credible. They got mm -hmm. to this position. They're telling the truth. And then you find out that this guy is like damn near, he's not threatening people, but he's trying to dig up dirt on these women to use against them and shit to protect his brother. Then you're like, all credibility is gone, yeah. right? You're like, dude, I used to trust your ass. Now I don't, you yeah. feel me? So you... A lot of people, especially in our generation and younger than us, are not going to the news to watch people. Not at all. They're going oh, hell no. to right? Twitter. TikTok. They're going to TikTok. They're going to Twitter. <laughs> they're going to Instagram. Yeah. To kind of see somebody either to get entertained or to see somebody like us talking about something and giving the real shit. Right. And I feel like that's where life is headed. Especially when I saw this shit, I was like, yeah, bro. Remember we were talking about in our last episode? Yeah. We were like, the news ain't credible, bro. Oh, it's not. And then this came out. I'm like, okay, if this guy is doing some creepy shit like pulling up to some girl's house with the tinted windows trying to pull, <laughs> take pictures and blackmail her, yeah. why am I going to trust you? I'm going to rather go on like, and maybe this is dumb of me, but I'm rather going to go watch an influencer like yeah. TikTok. The thing about TikTok is that if whatever is posted, those people in the comments are going to find the truth. That's sure. the thing about TikTok. So, like, you can't get you away with it. You don't even need investigators anymore. You don't. You <laughs> know, the internet will find and solve the problem. Yeah, for I'm sure. You, there are so people. Well. There's a word for it. I forget what it's called. The but internet. Tr uh, they, there is a word for it. It's not the trolls because the trolls are the haters. The ass, I think so. Uh, Honestly, at this point, they're just a straight up, they're, P CIA. they're private CIA, <laughs> private investigators. Yeah, they are. They do yeah. it for like living. Like no. they couldn't do it professionally, so they do it for TikTok. They 100%. literally knew, I remember it was a Kylie Jenner pregnancy. They were oh, going yeah. based off of her nail color on her post, the timing, the backgrounds of the video, the outfits that they were wearing This mm -hmm. when she was here, but this was this time. Like, they're, what do they call them? The internet fucking like, it's not inspectors or something. I know. But internet but detectives. Detectives or something. Yeah, TikTok. Or, but it's wild. Like you kind of are not safe in a weird way. Speaking of the internet, Britney Spears shit. Okay, bro. I wanted, I've been holding this in my soul. What's Hold new with it? it? Out. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if you've guys seen it. I'm definitely going to reference it right now. Basically, Britney Spears recently ended her conservatorship, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Neela in the prep, we got to talk about this, right? So basically, w within her little conservatorship and stuff, she was, um, her daily schedule was dictated by her dad, right? The money going into her account and coming out of her account was dictated by her dad, which in some cases, when you have this sort of conservatorship, it's not always that bad because if you have somebody that's like mentally incapable, like myself of my finances, <laughs> I just blow my, blow my money, you know, on everyone and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're actually in a point where you're not mentally capable of like running in your life in a productive way, especially if you're like an A-list celebrity that has an influx of money coming in at all times from different endorsement deals, different brand deals, and you're not mentally all there, there's going to be somebody that is appointed to you by the courts that's like, look, we trust this person. This person has your best benefit. We're going to put you to basically watch over the whole shit. This just ended for Britney Spears, right? And I find myself watching her videos on Instagram, and I'm definitely, and I don't want the people, the Britney, Britney people to come for me right now, right? I find myself like, some of her antics and stuff are a little sus, a little questionable, right? So she recently posted a video where she's like going off and I can highlight it. If you guys want to see it, I'll bring it up right now. She's basically like highlighting like um, her therapist, right? She's like talking about her therapist and like uh, her therapist was assigned to her for 10 hours a day. Oh my God. She would oh, have shit. to be with this therapist for 10 hours of the day and this therapist would tell her how to feel, how to think, 
how to walk, how to talk, what's good for her, what's not good for her, what she should be doing and what she should not be doing for 10 hours. And you would think, right? If I was stuck with somebody ruling my every single day and I'm in Mm -hmm. my 40s at this point or I don't know how old she is, right? I would go psycho. Yeah. Right? And she's now rebelling against it. She's now like... You, I'm going to out all of this shit and I'm going to make a joke of what you've been doing my whole life. And I'm kind of happy for her. I'm yeah. kind of excited that Britney Spears gets to, she couldn't even go to a restaurant for her birthday. That's yeah. so sad. That it was bad. Did you guys watch the documentary? I watched it. I was blessed. The day that I was like, I have time. I'm going to be a couch potato. <laughs> that was the day when Britney Spears shit came out. Yeah. I was so happy. I watched the whole thing. That same day, it was amazing. But the point is, is that, no, I followed along in TikTok when she was doing those weird stuff and they were like, save Britney. And I'm like, what's happening to Britney? I followed followed that journey. And so when I watched that documentary, I was like, oh shit, like that's crazy. She just banged up. Now look at this, like watch. I want you guys to watch this on the screen. Do the clear way, you know, so I can read you well, you read me well, so I can do my work. That's what it's about. I need to do my work for you to help you succeed this is what they make her do for 10 hours neela this is before i think we need to figure she's like making fun of Um, it are you breathing well okay um that's key number one i'm here to help you balls holy shit balls whoa girl wow oh my god uh holy shit well balls eh yeah holy shit but impersonating her therapist okay, right okay, okay and obviously she couldn't say holy shit balls <laughs> in general but now that her conservatorship mm, is over she she's like rebelling she's like you i'm gonna say whatever i want to say yeah as she should as she should she imagine your whole life not even having the opportunity to speak for yourself let alone exactly. do what you want to do what the being told what to do not having access to anything that you're accomplishing your pride. I don't blame her. And then, so that's, yeah, her whole youth. And now you don't know how to be sane. Exactly. So you're just rebelling and that you, to people look crazy, but realistically, you're just, I can't, you're clearly like you've been in prison. You've literally, literally been feels, in prison. It feels like she's been in prison and it feels like. That's so sad. Like, you so know, sad. you have, you that's have this. Horrible. So sad. And that was it, her father. Her dad. That did that to her. But it's like, you do have to have this almost sort of like, even I don't know if you guys follow um, podcasts and other podcasts and stuff. I know, Neela, you watch a ton. Like, Ritika, we have to, like, we're watching it constantly, right? He asked because he knows I only watch. Literally. I watch a selected feed. And it's, no, no. The, the, I watch when he sends me. In, in all honesty, bro, there's, like, a political correctness that we yeah. all have to have yes. on social media yeah. and stuff. Mm. And, like, there's these two podcast guys. His name's Akash Singh and Andrew Schultz, right? I watch them pretty is religiously. Is Akash right? Indian? Yeah, he is definitely Indian. Represent. He's my guy. He's representing. <laughs> he's a Hilar- thing. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious comedian. You guys should definitely check him out. But he's like on this. Their main motto for their um, their podcast is, um, if you're here for us to be politically correct, and you're here for us to say and like be apo- like literally in their description, it says unapologetic, not politically correct. If you want that, get the f- off our page. Mm. Right. And I feel like Britney Spears took a page out of that book where she's like, dude, I don't care anymore, bro. Mm. I want to say what I want to say. Finally, I'm out of this f- like yeah. stronghold that I've been in it's for so, so long. Sad. And it is what Can it you is. Imagine? And then I feel like the Britney Spears and like the Lindsay Lohans got so screwed over so during screwed. their era. I watched, I came across this TikTok where like, um, what was his name? The, the very famous, uh, inter- the guy that had a show. God, he did Kanye and Kim on Netflix. What's his name? The white guy, older white gentleman. Don't say Ryan and Seacrest. No, no, no <laughs> David Letter- Letterman. Letterman. Oh, Letterman. He was interviewing, um, bro, <laughs> he straight Seacrest. up interviewed uh, Lindsay Lohan. I, my heart broke for her in this interview, right? Like, I don't even know. Oh, I saw that. He was like, so aren't you supposed to be in rehab? And she was like, this is not in our prep. And then he like per- continues to pursue that conversation and, and goes, so, so what are you going to rehab for? Now, uh, aren't, you supposed to, aren't you supposed to be in rehab now? Do you not watch anything that goes on? I do. Tabloid now? And how long will you be in rehab? Uh, three months. How many times have you been in rehab? Several. And what, what, how will this time be different? What are they rehabbing, first of all? What, what is on their list? What, what are they going to work on when you walk through the door? We didn't discuss in the, this in the pre-interview. No, but, but <laughs> it'll be three months and... and you're no, looking... I, think, I think, to be honest, I'm, I'm the happiest when I'm working and the healthiest. And... I think this is 
an opportunity for me to, you know, focus on what I love in life. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a blessing. And when you when you go to the rehab, what do they well, do? Well, let's, let's, this is, we have to work here for a movie. We have to what? Let's stay on the positive. Oh, what? I'm like, right. aside from that side of the positive. Yeah. Like, what did you, what is it for this time? And she's just, like, so uncomfortable. Like, she's like, come on, dude. I want to talk about, like, the movie, like, that. It's This is for the movie. Mm. And she was so, un her body language, and my heart broke for her. Like, they really did that era really wrong. They really did. wrong. Like, it was like a, a sore, it was kind of like, hey, I'm making fun of you because I can, and you're going through this shit in life. You're literally going to rehab, and I don't give a because everyone knows about it, and let's continue to make a joke out of it. And even and Britney. And it's going to get him views, Yeah, that's money. not okay. That's not that's fair. That's what happened. That's why Britney shaved her head. Remember when she shaved her yeah. head and she went through the episode yeah. where mm -hmm. she shaved her head? Mm -hmm. She shaved her head because she was like, okay, all you guys are making money off me. I'm about to f*** you guys up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which kind of backfired on her because it gave them more money. <laughs> every single person was going over it. The like media is really interesting. And I think mm -hmm. that's why... Anything and everything you do is going to be worth something. And you know, that's a main, main concept with these like talk shows and stuff like David, David Letterman, Jimmy Kimmel and stuff where they'll like insert... They'll want to like portray something in a way where obviously the audience will get a kick out of it and stuff and they'll like insert uh like laughter and stuff when in reality right it's there's okay. no laughter it's yeah. quiet like in that mm. Lindsay lohan part right they inserted laughter yeah, like audience funny. laughter you feel me mm. and that's the sort of shit where like Psychology. i would so never awful. know that well in reality tv you it's know all fake there's like p parts where they're like laughing, but that's not even the part where they're really laughing, yeah. you know? And so like, it's so crazy. Like we're, we're given this like show that we're supposed to be like watching that's real. Like nothing's really real yeah. and it's kind of yeah. scary. And that's what we look at. That's what we watch. That's what we seek like for, for inspiration and the celebrities we look up to. And these are talk show hosts. Like I was growing, I still am. My dream is to be on Ellen. Like <gasps> I've always, Ellen, yeah. Like are I, we the same person? I told I my mom are. when I was a child, I was yeah. like, listen, I'm going to be on Ellen. So yeah, my time everyone. is running out you because like I totally think she's going to retire soon. So <laughs> Neela, we got to get on this. <laughs> Ellen, you can literally set, like set, you can like apply on her website. Even though I know. Ellen though. No, like, but I'm, I'm I'm not even saying, trying to, like it's they're not good people. I'm not even trying to hate <laughs> on her, bro. But, but like, I was like, Nila, canceled. <laughs> never coming on my show. Ex <laughs> no, but like, even there is times where like people would uh, show clips and stuff of like uh, Kim Kardashian feeling hella uncomfortable on Ellen and yeah. her talk. Remember, you saw that clip, right? And uh, there's where a few influencers who went on Ellen and like exposed her for being so toxic. Big mm -hmm. time, bro. Like yeah. her culture behind the Ellen show yeah. was so toxic. And then when you see it on um on a uh, what is it called? Like on mainstream TV, yeah. uh, television, you're like, this is th this is Dory from Finding Nemo. I love <laughs> Dory. Dory. You yeah, know, I forgot she yeah, Dory. bro. And like, you think of this girl like, oh, she can do no wrong. She donates so much money. She's like such a good person to haul her guests. But in reality, she a devlita behind the scenes. Devlita. get out my face you type know, shit. The the thing that I want to talk about though is like I am at this point of my life. I don't know if I'm just getting older. I'm like, there's always such a good side and a bad side to people, right? Mm -hmm. So like in her defense, like what if someone's telling her to do that that shit? What if it's her job's on the line? You don't even know what the truth is but at this point. It ain't hard. <laughs> being a good person true is it her it's no. easier to be a dick though That's i ain't gonna true. lie like it's way easier to be an asshole that is true but it's hella easy to just be a yeah decent, like put ooh. your foot down and be like no if i don't want my run, brand yeah. to be this way this is not me that's what like, i'm saying but that's right. there's so many players like you said and you and i have ran into this in our everyday life where it's not on that person they could be that's dealing true. with a piece of shit director yeah. that's telling them all what to do who yeah. to talk to oh, yeah. you only have two minutes ellen don't talk to that f person that's yeah. bringing in lunch mm -hmm. You need to boom, boom, boom. And then she's focused on her job. She can go and do whatever she needs to True. do. And then that person feels like shit. So I hear you, bro. It's also I, like the- There is so many players. People who take content and like make content off of others' content. Recently with the Ace family. I don't know if you follow oh, them. Oh, yeah. We mm -hmm. talked about them. Um, they, I just saw another video with Austin came out on their new video, The Last Day in Their House. And he was like, you know, people who try to take our content and talk shit about our life to get monetized and shit like this. Right? He was saying this. And like, in a way- 
I feel like it's natural nature, like, to talk about, you are, if you're out and if everyone has visibility to you, we're going to talk about you, right? But, like, I think there's ways to go about it without just being arrogant and kind of, like, insensitive to people because mm -hmm. we really don't know the other side and we don't know the reality of what's going on in someone else's situation, right? Unless True. you physically know or you actually are there. But the reality is that it happens. It's just a way to, like, be more, like, in, approach it in a humanistic way to understand that everybody is human. And even Ellen, like, if that is your job mm -hmm. and you have a production, like, you, you've been doing this, you're a big Time, right? everyone wants to be on Ellen even myself right like you know the impact you have though why are you creating no matter what your boss is telling you to do True. even if you have a, a you have an agenda you should still make it an environment where everybody wants to be there because so many people want to come to your show and work with you and be and, and talk to you like why are you okay with people walking away having a horrible horrible experience but I also yeah, I agree but I also don't feel like the way everyone's going about this like cancel culture and we've talked about this oh, several different right. oh, people times people are also just dramatic yeah. that's what I'm saying and sensitive. Let's it's be like, honest. sensitive there's that side of the house too there's yes. definitely that side of the house too or it's that's like come true. on you're that sensitive it's not even like that you know it's so freaking it's true. wild but in general like it's yeah I think I think the yes there's a combination of both but I think you said the a really great point about when you made it at that level, you can run the show. That's what I'm you can fire yeah. that director <laughs> left and right. The Alan show. show. Give her room to grow, though. You know what I'm saying? No. Give maybe like nobody's perfect. You know, mm. even Ellen, as as successful as she is, nobody in on this planet is perfect. But you have to give them room to grow. Yeah. Have them like. Uh, learn from your mistakes, but don't beat a dead horse. If like she understands she made mm. the biggest mistake in the world, give her some room to grow. And if she decides mm. on not growing and that work uh, place doesn't um, promote uh, like a, a sense of positivity uh, after the fact, then her ass, you feel mm. me? But right then and there, when someone makes a mistake, and I feel like that's the worst part of our culture and our society today is we're not giving people room to grow to change. and change and, perspective. and give them perspective on, yeah. on changing those stuff, you know? So true. It's a lot of like uh, quick to, to create the stigma of people and like this reputation versus, Hey, let's educate them. Let's teach yeah. them. Let's tell them why. And there are those people that we mm -hmm. get a lot of good comments of people saying, Hey, like totally, but this is why I don't agree. And I've mentioned on the podcast before too, like I love feedback. I, I live off of it and I grow from it and I want to know someone else's perspective. Even if I don't agree with it, I'm constantly wanting to learn. I just think the approach, right? It's all about the approach, mm -hmm. how you, how you center yourself and, and, and respond versus like this mentality of, it's this way and not your way and you're wrong and you're canceled. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of what I'm seeing. And it's right. it's kind of scary because it's like there's only one side or the other. And sometimes it's even that side of not being on either side. And that's still a side that's wrong, you know, or not I, right. I like, find myself overthinking about that portion so much just to make sure that I'm not offending anyone. For sure. And I've never, and I'm not trying to say I'm a saint, but like I've always like anything I've done in my life is has always been about love about making sure everyone's included and about just being authentic. And now I'm like really thinking about like walking on eggshells. Yeah. And so like, it's kind of unfair to, to like wh what our society is. Cause I'm like, why am I thinking so much about everything else? And then I'm like, well, even when I post on my story, I'm like, Hmm, does this like offend anyone? Am I saying anything? Pro uh, in, you know, like I'm just thinking so, does this even offend my own people? I called, um, I made a joke about um, Indians being cheap. I'm Indian. <laughs> I thought I was allowed to make fun of my own people. Clearly I wasn't. I got some DMs saying like, you shouldn't talk about Indians being cheap. It was only like three. I but like I'm that you said let's normalize. Like I saw your recent post too about normalizing like uh, cheap workout gear or something. Yeah. Not everything has to be Lululemon and like all buy my shit from Marshalls and yeah. I wanted to talk about it and I, I wanted to be funny and I said I I'm that. Indian mm -hmm. and I got to make my Indianness proud and I guess it offended three people that DM'd me random mm -hmm. people and they said you shouldn't talk about Indians being cheap I'm like they're I'm I'm Indian I'm cheap <laughs> <laughs> equation Indian cheap I am yeah. that <laughs> like I mean that was that's an example of like but I can't even so say that because you have such a good intent behind it and no way are you trying to actually offend I'm anyone literally joking people are sensitive so there is a portion of like people are getting super hypersensitive and can you pass me that actually mm -hmm. um I love you no yeah, the good stuff, okay. the good stuff. Um, and there is like a, a, a sense of like, um, 
hypersensitivity that our like people our, our society is going through but there is a sense of like mindfulness that you should have when going into things you yeah feel me? like bro i usually i work on impulse you know what i'm yeah. saying i just i'm impulsive i like to release what i like to release and we did that on one of our episodes right where like i said something oh. that was ratika when i tell you we got we almost got got we yeah. the comment section was insane i had the whole trans community coming for me you you know it was it was bad you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying he got but, called out for supposedly being transphobic when all he did was speak on him being comfortable and knowing what he prefers and in no way if you know this guy is he transphobic but mm-hmm. like it was it was how it was received that changed the whole mm-hmm. like perspective versus what he actually meant and I mean, that's a very sensitive subject. I get that to begin with. But in general, it's just, with anything, right? Like, one thing you say can be... It's not ever about how you say it. It's about how people, what they're going to take away from right. it. And it's scary. Have you guys seen, like... And with the internet, it's so scary because, like, even, like, if it's a video or a picture, how they can, like, change the whole format. The narrative to, like, of it. The narrative. And, like, it's terrifying, right? Because people are actually evil out there. And if they don't like something, they will really go out their way to try to, re- try to ruin your life. And, like, sure. it's scary because, like, the words you say. And there's so many times, I'm sure, on this podcast that I've contradicted myself. We're at Millions 10, of times. 20, we're epi- yeah. 20 episodes ago, I probably felt something that I no longer feel that way anymore. Right. Or I've changed within that time period. And I've had a new experience. So my perspective has changed or my opinion has changed but as human beings isn't that normal allow me to change yeah isn't allow that normal to allow to me, allow me to say some shit and yeah. then be like i don't uh, I, I was wrong last week yeah why yeah. is that so hard to do nowadays and i think maybe it's our generation because when we were growing up you had to have thick sticks thick skin mm-hmm. yeah you had to have thick skin you had to defend yourself i remember there was times where i had like jokes in my head to just counteract the jokes that I got because it, it was just saved in my head because I was like, okay, I'm going to get made fun of X, Y, Z. I'm skinny. I'm this, I'm that. Okay, what is my jokes back? And so that was the way we grew up and we had thick skin. Yeah. It made us strong. It didn't make us sensitive. And I'm a Leo. I cry. So the fact that I was Very, able to build that, yeah. it made me so much stronger. But now, like, it's like, it's like, Three like one eighty. <laughs> I saw this hilarious TikTok of this, this guy. Little this guy was he put like a fake background. He had like luggage. He's in the airport, and it's a Gen Z at the airport. And he goes, uh, "Where are the pa- where's the paparazzi at?" Like, oh, yeah, I saw that one today. And he was like, "Where's the paparazzi at?" Because like, they it, all think they're famous. That's how it <laughs> it's is. So funny. And I think it's on the aspect of like now, right? Everybody's opinions are in our face like this. Mm-hmm. It used to be not like that, right? Nope. When the internet was on its, like, precursor, like, before the the Instagrams and stuff. MySpace? MySpace, right? <laughs> was the first, the pinnacle of what, like, Shout social out media. Tom. Shout out Tom. Tom. Wherever he Who is. Who is Tom? Where is I've never seen any other picture of Tom than that. It's just that one thing. <laughs> that, <laughs> dude, he had, like, he might be Batman. No, I think he owns Tesla now. Honestly, I bro. Is <laughs> Tom even a real person? He might yeah, he's not He's a robot. Be. So, <gasps> like, that was the dawn of like the social media era where everybody had an opinion. Comments were a thing mm-hmm. now. There was never comments. You can't just comment on what mm-hmm. somebody's doing and either love it or hate it or show them that, mm-hmm. oh, you relate to yeah. it. Now we can post something or do something and in that moment, people are going to disagree. They're going to agree. They might not even be on either side of the spectrum and that's what kind of hurts people in the long run. But of course is that that idea of being mindful, right? Like George Clooney, I don't know if you guys heard about um, what him and Amal, his wife recently, they recently turned down a deal for $35 million for one day's of work, okay? What? One day of work and it was a commercial for an airline. And the reason why they denied this and i'm going to quote him he said well yeah i was offered 35 million for one days of work for an airline commercial but i talked to amal about it and we decided it's just not worth it it was associated with a country that although it's an ally of the u.s is questionable at times and so i thought well if it takes a minute sleep away from me it's not worth it Mm -hmm. and 35 million dollars sign me up i don't give a I'm just kidding. They're, I'm just kidding. No, but people are gonna come for him, that's right? What he's probably like the amount of like 
like annoyance that I'm gonna have to deal with and the the like the, the, tra- the treatment that's come with that no amount of money is gonna be worth that. And that's coming that. from an experienced individual who's clearly been in the spotlight and can that just goes to show that no amount of money is gonna be worth like the tos- toxicness that comes Imagine with it. Imagine though, like thirty five. Like mi- I'll take the thirty five million. One day you said shit. What airline was it? <laughs> Ratika, you down? We'll I, split I, it three ways. <laughs> is it Russia? Because I can do a good Russian accent. Yeah, dude. Vodka? <laughs> yeah, honestly, bro. And I think even with the A-list celebrities, you got to see Seriously. that there's a, like for us, right? We're just regular danglers, you feel me? In our minds, we're big time, right? But mm-hmm. we, in all honesty, yeah. when it comes to Hollywood and stuff, these are people who are been there, done that things. type of people. And there are people who have obviously publicists behind them. They have a lot of juice behind them. And if you know they're scared of what the public opinion is, mm-hmm. and 35 million is a huge chunk of change. That's for a lot of people, that will last a lifetime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for them, for them to deny that, although they're in the clear because this airline is a ally to the U.S. and there might not even be backlash, but that like little sliver of like uncertainty is pushing them to be like, I don't give a damn about this. Do you That's think scary. 10 years ago they would have said yes? Yeah. Yeah. Hell See? yeah. No, it's the times have changed. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. Everybody is just going to have something to say. No, I think you're walking on eggshells now. Yeah. And if like imagine if we're so cautious, celebrities especially, their entire career is on the line. That's what I'm saying. Are you yeah. guys cautious? So I know you did say like you were cautious of what you're posting, but do you still have that at the end of the day? I don't give a damn. Yeah, because I'm a Leo. <laughs> I keep okay. talking about okay. my okay. horoscope. Okay. No, no, no. To your point, I think there is a time because it's the creative side first that comes in play. And then there's a perfectionist side. And then the last one is like, am I offending anyone? But I go through this like whole thing. And this is even a story. Like that shit going to disappear in one day. But I still look at it. I'm like, is this a creative post? Does this match my theme? Does this tell my story? Then I look at the, oh, you know, is this creative? And then the last piece, I'm like, am I offending anyone? But then after I go through that thought process, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to post this. Like whatever. And yeah, it does take me a while. But like that's so, isn't that so wild? That I have to go through this process to post a story that's going to disappear in a day. Do you post for Wait. you or do you post for others? And be think, real, though. Be you know, real. I think it's 50-50 because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I do love my own story, my own posts. But at the same time, I do want it to show my story and show who I am. And I do care about how I, how I portray myself to my audience. So it is 50-50. But at the end of the day, I'm like, this is me. And... Does this does this matter to the to the audience that I have, right? And yeah. so, like, I would say there's, in my opinion, on my story, I do care about both things, but there's never a time where I don't care about myself. So I think that's the difference. I think that's what I. I mean, personally, I can speak for our platform. I think that's the biggest struggle, right? Because for Neil and I, there's a certain piece of content that always is always working for Mm -hmm. us right Mm -hmm. all no matter what we post like this content will be so great and we know it and i often find myself in this battle even when it comes to like my social media and stuff and i'm like am i posting for me right now Mm -hmm. are we doing this because we want to talk about this certain topic or are we posting it for others and i think that's what's lost in social media because you know like when they say the foundation of a relationship was from the beginning right? Like the way somebody got into this relationship or the way you got into a certain relationship was like even before all of the bullshit happened throughout the relationship, the foundations was wrong. The way they they put the flooring and the way they (laughs) built the structure was wrong, right? And I feel like that's uh, what sticks out to me so much because the foundation of social media is built on other people's recognition of your Mm. work it's based on likes Mm -hmm. it's based on how many times your uh picture or your video or your content is being um uh uh, circulated amongst Mm -hmm. the masses right and then we form this like love for the appreciation or Mm -hmm. like the love we're getting on this certain thing and it's hella tough to like dial back and be like well i want to post this remember i was talking to you about your content and stuff we were talking about our content i was like well, maybe this might, and then Neil and I had that talk. We're like, dude, this is what we want to post. It Who all cares. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I feel like that's the biggest struggle in the social media era, where we're so fixated on other people's recognition of our work. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of us posting what's significant to us and then letting other people receive that the way they receive Mm -hmm. it based on what they like, based on what they don't like. It's the loyalty that we need. I don't care. If you want to unfollow me, unfollow me, block me, please. It'll help my algorithm. Like, don't be that person that's like, oh, I don't like her stuff. Then literally just unfollow me. It's as simple as that. And I think that's the thing. Like, I feel like back in the day, people were so much more loyal. And now it's very easy to teeter-totter. Like, I like this person. No, I don't anymore. And now I do. You know, like this person. And that's the thing that I see the difference in this generation, this time. Like, the loyalty isn't there as much. You know, I think it's like, there's a difference between, I posted posted this on Twitter. There's a difference between fans and followers. Yeah. And I feel like there's followers right now. There's not enough fans. Fans and that's of the, the work thing. and stuff. I completely yeah, agree with that, that's bro. That's hella true. Like, loyalty is, like, a big proponent in, like, your friendships and, like, the people that you surround yourself with. And, like, we're slowly, so- slowly, like, teetering off of that and worrying about, like, what the crowd mm-hmm. with and stuff like that. And, like, again, back to that creative portion of, like, creatives and stuff, I feel like that's the most pivotal uh peace in all of this because who are you going to trust you're going to trust me with no blue check mark you're going to trust the person with the blue check mark mm-hmm. i know i me myself as a consumer of this work i'm probably gonna find credibility in the person mm-hmm. that does have mm-hmm. the blue check mark rather than my friend which sucks That's you know kinda, yeah. it's just how so my sad. brain through whatever Psych- type of yeah. wiring so it's happened over so long now my credibility goes straight to the person with the blue check mark rather than my friend that's pouring this content and that's authentic right. you know and that that hurts that hurts me a little uh, bit on tiktok like i find myself though videos that have a million views i watch the rest of it to see why they got a million views or likes or whatever it shows right but the ones that have like 50 i literally give it like two seconds and i'm like if you it's move not, on i move on yeah. and because i i found i literally found myself doing this i glance over to the the right and i'm Dude. like me Boom. too. And I'm like, that's so effed up. Yeah. And there's been times when I'm early to this post and I finished it and I'm like, this is going to go viral. And I'll like comment. I'm like, I know this is going to go viral or whatever. And then it goes viral. But the point is, is that I literally give it like two, three seconds because of what it's, what it shows on the right side. And that's yeah. so effed Bro, up. That's crazy <laughs> that you say that, that because recently wild. I was on this guy's um, TikTok and we're finding people to run our TikTok for us and stuff. But for now mm-hmm. it's Neil and I, right? Yeah. We're running all of our social media platforms and stuff like that. So um, all in-house. And I was going through this um, TikTok and, you know, we comment to kind of show our visibility on the platform and stuff mm-hmm. on different viral videos that we find entertaining and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I came across this uh, video that was such a fire video and I only had like three likes on TikTok right. and I literally skipped. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, and I didn't like it. Yeah. Whereas like if another video had 150K likes, I would for sure heart yeah. it, right? Before it even starts, Before I even had starts. it. Hey, it has a million likes. I'm going to like yeah. this. Like I literally caught myself doing it. And then I, I unlike it. I'm like, wait, I don't know if I like this yet. Oh, yeah. like, a line, <laughs> dude. Yeah. And this, I found myself going back and That's be like, so well, funny. Why did I just skip? And I go back and I'd be like, damn, this is a good video. Like, yeah, yeah. because I feel so you. Like, wild. Right. It, I think it's just like how we're wired now. We're kind of in this like how we're herd mentality herd where we go effect. with like this. We're followers, literally. Yeah. And we're followers. Like, it is hard to break out of that. Just like, don't be a follower. Lead, be a leader. Be I like, leader. I'm getting more comfortable. I used to not comment. I would, I'm a liker. Yeah. I, unless it's like my friends or family, but I used to just like not comment. And mm. now I'm commenting because I, I wouldn't comment because I'm like, this person has a million comments. They're not going to even see mm-hmm. my comment. Mm-hmm. But like I comment now just because I want to speak on how I feel. And like mm-hmm. if I see something I like, even if it has 30,000 comments, I'm going to put my, you know, I want to put my two cents in and, and say, oh, I love this video or you're amazing. Um, and it, it does go a long way because mm-hmm. like people actually sometimes do see it and I would want the same, you know, like you I are. feel like we put in the time. It is weird. It's so right that we are so programmed to go towards the numbers as everything's such metrics. I hate that, but it shouldn't be that way because I can guarantee, which I know people are like with us, you are missing on some gold content just because they're not probably as, um, hyped up or verified than right. compared to others. There's been videos of like, um, it's on YouTube and this is an old thing now, but like someone would copy Kylie Jenner's Instagram like posts, like mimic them and see how like their followers would respond. And like the fact that it was like similar to a celebrity, like they would get more traction. It's like, 
why is copying such a thing now? Like, oh, isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot. Like, there's this guy on YouTube. His name's Mr. Beast. Mm-hmm. And, and Nila, you, we've done a lot of research on this guy. This guy's like one of the biggest YouTubers in the space, Ritika. Are mm-hmm. you familiar with him? Sounds familiar. What does he, he do? He recently did the re- remade the TikTok he, for uh, the Instagram. No, no, the YouTube for Squid Game. Yeah, so oh. he remade like the entire set. He's Freaking making cool. about, he's like, I think he's at 170 million views on that video. Yeah. It's insanity. Wow. insanity. Like overnight. And there's this Russian spinoff of his channel where they're literally copying every single thumbnail, every single video, and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people, because like think back, right? Think back of when I can think of myself I stopped caring about being liked and being mm. like loved and revered and thought of high, like probably a couple of years ago. Mm. I would say maybe you not even have. like yeah. three, maybe three years ago, like a year before the podcast started or something. And I really real or four years before that or something like that. But I really stopped caring. If I wanted to wear something, I'm wearing it because mm. of me. If I wanted to do something, I'm doing something because of me. I don't care what other people think. Right. And even throughout like middle school and high school, I found myself like wanting to be like the cool kids, mm. wanting to do what's praise and wanting to do that. And I found myself later and later in life it becoming stressful. Like it literally became a stressful, stressful. daunting thing to want to like look like this or, or act like this because this is what people like, or this is what people like down to the point where when I was younger, I would deepen my voice. I talk like this. (laughs) I thought this is what the girls liked. Right. (laughs) And then I was like, as I grew older, I was like, I don't got the energy for this. And yeah. I could care less yeah, if like you don't like... Yeah, like, my throat hurts. Yeah, and I'm like, bro, I could care less if you don't like the tone of my voice, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're going to either like me for Adis or you're not going to like me for Adis, you know? But I feel like a lot of people are still stuck in that mentality because it took me how many years? Like, I'm 27, you know? I just turned 27, and it took me until I was, like, what, 23, 24 years old to realize, like, there's so much power in being you Mm -hmm. and doing you to the point where people will find inspiration. Just like you found inspiration from others to act like them, people are going to find inspiration of you being you. And if you're acting like everyone else, you're almost deading it right there. Nobody can find inspo from you because you're acting like this person yeah, you know true. what i'm saying and it just becomes like fraud all across and now i mean look at the impact that it has on social media with like all for example the fashion the makeup everyone looks the same mm, everyone true. looks the same it's so rare to come across like a, a natural original looking face which i love how everybody looks it's beautiful it's a vibe but like i feel like in general like it all just it's, it started with the escalation of just like this is a look this is how you need to look everyone look like this okay. well like the filters like, on why? instagram like there's a point where i'm yeah. not gonna lie i started putting these filters on my on my story and i didn't even like my real face unless i had that filter yeah. on you have a great face so you should you definitely do. you should definitely <laughs> like but that's what's happening and they're going and actually getting procedures wait wait so wait like, wait did you, have you seen the new app Yes. Rit- what app? You've seen the new app? What are you okay. talking about? New what app? I saw it on TikTok. Okay. okay. Ritika, it, let me all put you on. It made everything make sense. Okay, <laughs> what ladies. Are you there's scared. this app on TikTok. You want to blow, just blow it up. Say fuck it and just release the No, no, it's the Face app. The fa- it's called the what Face app. What is that? App. It's called the Face I'm app. I'm so scared. Oh, you're going to. And it's on oh, TikTok. Oh, I'll DM it. it to you. I don't want it. And then. No, no, no. You literally need to see because I played, I downloaded it and my sister downloaded it to a tan. We were all playing around with it. And like we put a picture and there's filters that come on it and you can click the filter and it like, it'll put like makeup on you. It'll put like a smoothing Ritiga, it's filter. Fine. I'm not even going to lie. Use, I, use face, I use Facetune to like some, for my makeup enhancement, like to detail my makeup mm. or like smoothen like an imperfection. I'll have pimples. Right. But like. This app puts a face on you. No way. And now I can't unsee it on everyone's picture that I... Not everyone, but like I see it now. You know that perfect looking like picture of the girl that ever had the makeup the yeah. lashes the contour the oh hair oh my god it's all, you'll see it it's, see? A, it's a face i app. went through this i journey. can't unsee it I, Listen, you have to see it this and this year is okay. when i finally so i beginning of the year i because filters were a thing and stories and i'm like oh my god it looks so good i don't even need any surgeries yeah. i have my lips done i have this done i have that done and it was so normalized and i was like everyone knows i have a filter on but whatever it's normalized and I couldn't see my face without this filter. Every time I would go on my story, I'm like, it's already programmed there. It would just come up because that's the freak, frequently yeah. used filter. 
and I went through this journey. I'm like, this is not my face. And then now I'm like, I love my features. I love my like normal love size it. lips. I love everything about me. And yeah, I still put a filter on here and there, but nothing that will alter my face anymore. Good. If it has like a little saturation or a little grainy, yes, I will keep that on because it's just cute. But nothing that will no, alter my face. Don't download this app. Then don't download I, this I app. I put my picture on it, and I was like, "Damn, that That's looks the thing. so good." It looks but good. I, I could not. I would never post it because I feel. I even sometimes on Facebook, I like, I'll ask my sister, "I'm like, is this too much smoothing? Does it look like a filter?" But like, some I can't get myself to. And shout out to you if you do it because like I love it for you. You look good. I it makes you look so good. And I I was like, I can't get myself because. I, people are going to see me on camera. Yeah. I film. I don't look like that. Well, like, so, like, I don't want to be perceived that way. But, like, I, I deleted it. I was like, I, I, it's gonna, it almost became impossible to take a picture and not put it on there to see what it would look like a little right. enhanced. But, like, but everyone looks like a brat doll now. That's what I That's, went through that journey. I was do. like, I started looking like that. And I was like, my lips are not humongo. Yeah. My face isn't like this. Why am I so into this right now? I don't look like this in person. And that's what got me out of the cycle. And I was like, thank goodness gracious, because I was becoming like very like, this is the filter. If it's not on my face, I don't like my face. And now I'm finally like proud of my features. And I think that's what we need to get back into. Like yeah. the features that you have. Yeah, you got makeup is meant for like enhancing those things, but don't alter that whole entire no, look. No, people are actually, like while we're on the topic of looking perfect. Mm-hmm. Let's talk you about look perfect. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I want to talk about being imperfect. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. I feel like, and obviously, join in if you know you feel the same, that our generation is normalizing gray hairs. I feel like my parents, till this day, they dye their hair from their little Garnier, sure. Garnier <laughs> freaking doesn't even match their whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they be switching it up sometimes doing a little bit red tones and stuff anyway the point is is that they're my our parents generation maybe it's an asian thing because it's so weird when people say asian when they refer to you know afghans yeah and, uh, yeah like, it's asia yeah, i know asia. it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we but are. Like, yeah i know right and so like the fact that our parents are so obsessed of like not showing great hairs like, I feel like our generation is now starting to feel comfortable with it because I have a few. And I remember I went to a reception like two months ago and some person in their like 40s, 50s were like, you have so much, you have a lot of gray hair showing. Like, how old are you? And I was like, do I? I what don't bitch. even know. And I was like, <laughs> I don't. I was like, what? But then like, I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, I do. There's like five or something in my hair or whatever. But I don't care enough to, like, do something about it. And I'm starting to think that, like, we're the f first ones to, like, normalize really that. Like, do we it. Do we feel like it's sexy? Is it an Asian thing that we dye our hairs? Or, like, what is going on? Because, like, the salt and pepper thing is in. For or sure. has George been. George Clooney, stand so, up. So, like, let's talk about that. In all honesty... George Clooney. I, sometimes I look at George Clooney. I'm like, I really hope I age like this guy. The hottest, most handsome, <laughs> handsome okay, he's man. Sus for me. No, I'm just. I'm like, just he's like so this. Handsome. Yeah. Yeah. He ages well. Yeah. He, he really does. Salt and pepper is my type. <laughs> and because it's like more so of like you're embracing what, and but an argument there is a lot of people. Have you guys been noticing that people are going to Turkey and shit to fix their hair? A lot yeah. of men mm -hmm. are going to Turkey. I'm on I'm the next gonna, flight. I'm going also. <laughs> they have like I I. <laughs> find a lot of pride and i had beautiful hair at one time and as i'm growing mm. older my hairline is starting to kind of dissipate and i'm like i can't even embrace ratika i feel you on the salt and pepper if my hair turned gray and shit i would embrace it you wouldn't it. care about as that as long as it's full then the second part oh, is no. is that balding is being so common in our generation too that's I think true it's stress. though it's stress i think it's, it's hormones related. i think it's our food hormones. in america it is, it is. It is. 100 percent. i'm going through hair loss and it has to do with stress the environment hormones everything food. like it has so much to do and it's with hair it's so annoying because you can't really ever identify the root cause but it is like and i feel so like i'm actually documenting my hair journey because i'm mm. gonna make a video about it um and it's like, it sounds crazy because to some people it's just hair on the head and they're like, dude, you sound stupid. But like 70% of my confidence comes from my hair. Right. And it's really important because like it's a, it, I don't know. I love the way I've always had my hair. Like this is all virgin hair. I haven't mm -hmm. dyed it. Oh, and yeah. I have some grace to every now and then just because 
I think it, it it inspires like oh that person's working hard. They're like like anyone with gray hair is like working their ass off, stressed. Wisdom. Like you know that they're doing something with their life, you know. And I don't think and sometimes it is genetic, um, but I feel you like. I think it. I I think youth is a beautiful thing. Aging is a beautiful thing. Mm. It's a part of life, right? Love and I that. think that so, to some people, sometimes it happens sooner, or some people age quicker. You know, like so, it just it depends. But I think we. I love that it is more normalized because mm. it's there's nothing wrong with things that we can't control. Right. Like it is what it is. Even like if you're losing hair, and I, I and I absolutely agree. If you want to diet, diet. If you want to go get your hair fixed because your lo- hairline, do it because it. What matters is what makes you feel good. Right. And I'm constantly thinking about okay, what do I need to do to make my hair fuller like as full as it used to be you know because I'll feel better looking at it touching Mm -hmm. it knowing that it has that density versus like it's not a matter of like trying to look perfect for society it's your confidence Mm -hmm. for yourself right right right. I think that normalization piece is huge because even with the hair stuff like I'll have full dialogue with people that are talking about their hair loss and stuff like some of my homies that are starting to see their hairlines recede and shit I'm like bro don't even trip because once my hairline goes for sure I'm going and fixing it you feel me and like I find more and more confidence in knowing that it's like a normal issue for people to lose hair to grow gray hair Mm -hmm. and that are dying there and stuff like Mm -hmm. that because it's like now you know it's not on some like misery loves company type shit it's more like at least a huge a huge portion of people are going through the same struggle Mm -hmm. and i can kind of talk about it and not give a fuck about me talking about it instead of trying to hide it not to bring it back to social media and tiktok but there is a whole community so i started looking up like the hair loss shedding situation and it is actually really fulfilling to see that people have your problems are people's problems Mm -hmm. too and that there's a world out there that doesn't make you feel alone and True. they're literally saying and speaking what you're feeling and you're like fuck me too you know yeah. so you don't feel crazy right, right in a way right. but like it is it's crazy like and absolutely to your point like if you i've always been a fan of like cosmetic like um just okay, like fixing bro, yourself keep it real. if you want to you into botox y'all into botox or I what mean, i've never had botox but i'm definitely going to get it one day honestly okay yeah. can i say something why is braces not a bad thing okay Exactly. You, but Botox Latika, is my spirit animal yeah. for yeah. this one, okay? Because like now <laughs> we're seeing everybody just say, "It, I'm gonna go get veneers or lumineers and yeah. shit." I'm more so like, I kind of would rather get braces and just make sure that my teeth yeah. are just like become normal after a set amount of time instead of like having my teeth underneath decaying yeah. and hella mm-hmm. crooked, throwing up gang signs. <laughs> While my shit is like not actually behind, because then you have to redo them and you got to do this. Not saying, bro, everybody that has lumineers and veneers, they look better than I do, better than my teeth. I definitely had two braces for like three weeks a few years ago. Great decision. Two years ago. And it changed my whole, people think I got veneers. And I'm like, no, I literally had a gap. And like, I went to my my dentist and I was like, okay, let me get veneers. Cause like, not veneers, Invisalign. Right. And he was like, you don't even need that. I could fix this for you in a week. He literally put two braces on the front. Do you guys remember? I had two clear fingers. Yeah. I was literally in the office for like two weeks. It was hilarious. With just that's two. That's hella funny. And that's all it took. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if that's the thing. I know there's like a there's like a Netflix show about this, but there's layers of enhancing your beauty, right? There's like little buckets. But like at the end of the day, it's enhancing your beauty. Braces, dyeing your hair, cutting your hair, shaving, all of that is enhancing beauty. So why is there so much judgment when it comes to like other things? Yes, there's anything in life, if you overdo it, then it's going to suck, right? So there's elements to it, but there's so much judgment for like little things and then there's no judgment for that, but it's the same shit yeah, right. at That's the end true. of the day. Enhancement. Yeah. When I was in high school, everyone had them. There was like a wave and I never had them and I, I didn't need them, but I always wanted them. So I, unfortunately... I got them when I was like in my late twenties, and yeah. I was like walking around with just two. <laughs> but I mean, it did what it, it gave, what it was supposed to give. You yeah, know what I mean? like it did the job. So I think there's, I think it's just a matter of being comfortable with mm-hmm. whatever you're comfortable with. And if some people would rather just like bypass the, if you got the money to get veneers, get veneers. Then do what you do. Your do thing. Right. Like Turkey, I, you know, like I would go to Turkey. I heard they have like the best like cosmetics for everything, like mm-hmm. hair. Um, yeah, I've heard and read. Um, so like, and in terms of like, even like the back to what you were mentioning about like the filters on the app, mm. like people will literally go and look, take a picture of the filter and show these surgeons or say, this is what I want to look like mm. and like mimic that because it's just, it becomes an obsession. You look good and, right. and it comes out like if, and so there's like these people on the internet who are like all, all over TikTok where like really exaggerated plastic surgery. Like it's, 
almost like it doesn't look healthy, you know? It's like the really, really bad ones, right? Here's the really, thing. Really, really bad. Do you guys... So, I know that, like, plastic surgery, there's a black and a white. Like, there's not just black and white, but mm-hmm. there is middle ground, right? Where you don't have to look so mm-hmm. crazily into the... Yeah. Like, you can enhance your features, like, let's say... Still be you. And still be you. Like, you yeah. know, a lot mm-hmm. of girls are doing lip fillers and stuff. You don't have to be the girl that has, like, huge, like, lips. You can put a little bit in there, but... Do you think that these people that do have a, a plastic surgery, and I, there's a lot of women in our family that do get Botox mm. and do these things, and I would never have known, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's so subtle. So subtle, But yeah. do you think that it's a slow roll obsession rather than like, okay, of course, like mm. you would think, okay, these girls understand going, they don't want to look like a crazy person, but like... After a significant amount of time, it just increases. And then that small amount, milliliters of Botox becomes one liter. I don't know how the yeah. metrics go. And then two liters. And then they're trying to maintain. <laughs> then they grow older, right? And then it's like five liters. And then there's more line because you're growing of age. So it's like, do you think that's the catalyst? It's just, just yeah. like, right? Well, well, with anything, right? You When you get obsessed with something, it be, anything too much is bad for you. That's what I Even heard, yeah. water. You know, if you drink mm-hmm. too much water, you can die. Someone so died that's of the that, thing. Yeah. There's like, I know that's Swear like, to God. you can oh God, really, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, someone had, do you remember that? There was a girl that <laughs> went into a, a water drinking contest. She drank too much yeah. water and she died. died. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything in this world, if you do too much of it, it's bad for you. So I think that's where you just have to reset and just think like, am I overdoing it? Like, and I think that's like, that's our, the hardest thing, our culture is just so obsessive right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get so obsessed with something. So I think that's where our problem lies. Do you guys ever look at, like, I know Ritika said this earlier, but how often does this happen where you look, do you find yourself looking at yourself from an outside perspective like zooming out and think, looking at yourself from not from first person, mm-hmm. but from third person and kind of viewing like, am I doing the right thing here? Oh, I like, do that all the time. I do that all the time. And I, you know what's weird? A lot of people don't do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I do don't do that. I do that literally all. That's how I make base every decision in my life. I, yeah. I get out of my body and I do third person. That's the hardest thing to do. I think when do. it comes to like speech, like when I'm saying things, I'm always how being aware. Mm. If I'm posting things, I'm never thinking about how someone else is going to view it. Like if it's my post, if it's my selfie, I'm never going to be like from the outside looking in how strangers are viewing it. But if it's like even in our professional world, we mm-hmm. have to constantly be aware of what we're saying. I feel like in that aspect, I'm always aware. But I don't ever over, even if I'm posting something, I'm not thinking about how people are seeing it. In a way, I don't think I ever have. I'm, I'm, I'm always doing always that. Doing really, that, and I, I'm, I'm not in that aspect only, but just any decision, anyone. Like, let's say someone's feeling a certain way, I can get out of my own body mm-hmm. and look at their perspective mm-hmm. put them, every put single time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of sometimes I do that too much, and I'm like, what do I really think at the end of the day? But I have the ability of doing that, and I feel like just like you. I don't think a lot of people can. No, you know? it's the hardest thing because like, think about it. You are in your body and in your mind 24-8. Right. Like, you're always <laughs> thinking eight. from Ratika's point of view, Adisa's point of view, Neela's point of view, and you're consumed by your environment and what's going on in your life. How and everything you were brought up. How you're brought mm. up, how you've been brought up and how you've been raised to think a certain way and stuff. And it's hard for yourself to, t- it's hard for you to take yourself out of the situation and kind of reflect on how somebody else would perceive mm-hmm. this message or somebody else would view you. And I feel like a lot of girls. That's a good point. And a lot of dudes. Yeah, bro. I was going to say, so I think it depends because you know yourself and you're comfortable with yourself. If I'm going to post a picture in like a bikini, I'm going to be thinking about like the older men and women of like mm. my culture that follow me that are going to view it. And I'm probably going to be like, Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with them looking at me like that, right? If or if I have like some cleavage or whatever, but like I know that I wouldn't post like a a sexual picture like that, like in a bikini, like with a motive like that, because I know myself, which is why I don't have to think about what mm-hmm. I'm posting. Mm-hmm. But if I do post something out of my element, I'm gonna think about like, oh, how are people gonna see this? Mm-hmm. You know, I think the important part is coming back to you. Yeah, we can go you through this whole thought yourself. process. Mm-hmm. You need to know yourself. Right. And then at the end of the day, do you really care? You know, what do you think at the end of yeah. the day? You can go through your mom, your cousins, your fans, your this, boom, boom, boom. And then come back and you're like, should I post this for me? I think that's the important, important yeah. part. Coming back to yourself and like thinking like, what do you care? What do you, who cares about? You know what I mean? This is you. And I, fi- I find myself like 
within social media, right? Like I'm the type of person where, and Neela knows this, I'm not a social media guy. Like, and I know it's hilarious because we have a podcast. We're constantly on social media. Our faces are plastered everywhere at this point. (laughs) But like even growing up, like there was huge portions of my life, like five year spans, six year spans of me having zero social media Mm. down to my whole entire college career. I didn't have an Instagram or a fucking Twitter, even down to like my, there would be girls in my, so I went to Santa Clara, right? Uh, and I'd have like a bunch of girls in my classes and stuff. Right. And the first thing they'd ask me is like, add me on Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would look at them and I'd be like, I don't have an Instagram. (laughs) Right. And that would be like an instant red flag for them. They'd be like, why are you a serial killer? Like, what are you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. But like, I find myself in those instances where like, I do, I do value what, uh, other people are, are taking in, but I always find myself saying, well, I don't really give a fuck and I don't want to post this shit like down to like I used to post so much of like when I was fighting and I I fought every single day. I practiced MMA every single day and I would always post these videos and I posted them for other people to see and Mm -hmm. it was like a other third person point of view on it. And then after a while, I was like, well, I don't really give a fuck myself about posting this and why am I posting this? But I found the love I found myself loving social media all all over again just because I can be myself and I can post these these things. And I remember when you were posting your fitness journey. And I know, Neela, you're also on a fitness journey, bro. Am I? Yes, you are, girl. You know you are. You got me on mine. And hey. Shout out, Kenneth. And that's the crazy part. And it kind of inspired me to be like, bro, I used to do this all the time. And it would, uh, I would feel inspired by other people doing this. And it kind of gives you a certain type of power. When you do post your fitness goals, are you, it's not in a sense of like, look at what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I am the shit, right? It's more so of like a vulnerability, actually. Vulnerability. Exactly. And that's what I find hella beautiful in people that understand that aspect yeah walk me through that how do you feel when you do put is it ever awkward is it ever weird yeah no you know what i have been in this wild journey with my fitness thing i was a fitness freak years ago then became lazy pandemic came became an avocado my body looked like an like a freaking avocado (laughs) me too i'm there right now I'm there right now. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> I was the same exact shape of an avocado. And I was like, this is not me. Like what happened to my body? I didn't feel right. I didn't feel good. My mindset was all screwed over, screwed up. And so the the problem was that I wasn't feeling like myself. It wasn't even about the physical part of it. It was more even emotional, mental. And so I think this year I made this hashtag enough's enough. That's the dopest hashtag. Yeah. Thank you. Because it really, that was the words I said. I was like, enough's enough. Like, what am I waiting for? Like, why am I waiting? What am I? I didn't even know what I was waiting for to start, you know? And so, like, I kept thinking I had to be, like, mentally there. But, like, in reality, that's all noise. So, I think, like, Neela and Ken, shout out Ken, they Mm -hmm. were the ones who were like, you need to just take this freaking Orange Theory class. Just get yourself in the environment, the community, the people that are trying to, you know, do this one goal, work out, be healthy. And I finally did it. And I realized that it's not even about like the physical aspect at all. It's actually about how you feel inside and how you want to be and just continue doing it, you know? And so like, I think that's how I started my fitness journey. And it's not, this is the first time ever that I'm eating an Oreo cookie still and I'm having my wine and I'm doing my work. It's like my life now. It's not because I'm doing like, you're healthy. You can't have Oreo cookies. You can have wine. You can have a shot of tequila. This is the first time I'm like incorporating this as a lifestyle and I love it. Like it feels natural to me. And so I think I went through this whole journey, right? Like all these expectations. But the point is, is that the enough's enough thing came up. It can go with anything, right? Anything you want to do, just enough's enough. Like just do it. And it's like, crazy to me because it's now my lifestyle with everything actually i find my so i I was i'm an avid podcast listener and um i'm a fan of logan paul Mm -hmm. right and he has his own um he has his own uh podcast and he said something in his recent podcast that really resonated with me right because for the longest time i was in sports my entire life since Mm -hmm. the third grade i was in contact sports like physical football you know what i'm saying tackle football from a very young age and i was 
kind of uh, thrown into this lifestyle that mm. served me for so long, right? And as I was growing older, right, I would work out religiously. Neela knows this. I would work out every single day. You would mm. see me posting a, a picture in the gym and stuff like that. But he he said something in his recent podcast where he was like, when you're in this creative space and when mm. you're in a creative, that hinders the um, the athletic part of your your being it it hinders your mm. ability to like tap into like another portion of like self-improvement because you're so focused in this creative side of yourself like let's mm. say for example Neela she has her main job right right and then she has her creative job which mm. is her makeup which is the podcast which takes so much energy so much energy. that the physical portion and working out is almost out. impossible. Yeah, you're tapping out because like you're pouring and even into the creative side, sometimes it's too much to the point where you're like, I cannot do that. I'm tired. I don't mm. want to do this. I don't have any motivation. Mm. How are you going to find motivation when you're pouring all of yourself into your main day to day and then your creative mm -hmm. side to work out? Right. So balance and we talked about this on a right. previous episode the hardest thing about myself and i can probably speak for a lot of people out there is balance learning mm -hmm. how to balance things yeah. and sometimes we're so much into one thing and mm -hmm. not into this thing that we kind of neglect something like right. even neela ne me and neela were talking about this um and she was feeling some type of way right because like mm -hmm. every single day right her every day was into her makeup brand right mm -hmm. and then once work Re, like vamped up after COVID and once her life picked back up, once COVID subsided and stuff, makeup kind of went was, down, went down right. right? And her posting and her morale went down. And I remember talking to her on text and I was like, yeah, this you're going through this, but you're a human being, bro. Mm. There's only so much that your psyche can take, right. but it's will your it's your willingness to combat that right. and willingness to find balance and find a um, middle ground in all of it. And I feel like that's the hardest thing with all of us. Like for me, once I started this podcast, I was a really strong dude. Like I was like 190 pounds, weightlifting every single day, started the podcast, started working in the tech world and stuff at that time. And fitness and my fitness goals and everything kind of started to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like, I was actively saying like, look, bro, I need to focus on this. I'm going to, it was like something that was actually hurting me. Mm. Like I felt weird feeling like an avocado. You yeah, feel me? Avocado. I felt weird looking at myself in the mirror and being like, bro, this shit sucks. But I understood that w when I started to bring my creative mm. side, it kind of hindered my ability. So I have said this to you before. I feel like we all have pillars in our lives that are very important. They're all equally important to you. So for me, I have five pillars. I have my job, my main hustle. I have my side hustles, my, you know, Ritzy Radio, my Instagram and all that good stuff. I have my dog. He made into one of the pillars. He's new to my life. Real one. Um, I have my family and friends. And then I have my fitness. Those are my five things that like fuel me. And I need all of those five things to be perfect, to be like feel free, fulfilled, feel happy. Fulfilled. And that's the thing. I want all of these five things. So if any area goes down, I feel so agitated, antsy. I feel bad if one, one pillar is lower than the other For pillar. Sure. So that's the struggle that I'm going through. And I feel like all of us that have so much on our, on our plate, naturally, people only have like three or two pillars. They're just cruising. They're good. But some people like us that want to do more and, and just kind of, you know, have these pillars that are very important to us. That's when it becomes draining. So I think like, like you said, the balance, I need all of these five pillars to feel good. So if one is getting sacrificed, if I'm doing one too much, I think I just need to reset myself and say like, I'm spending too much time on pillar number A, B, C, mm -hmm. where am I at at D and E? You know what I mean? So like, I think we just have to reset when it comes to like, I'm spending too much time here. Let me do one day with puppy time now. No, nothing else. 
just my puppy or let me do family time now not you know what i mean just like balancing yourself are you a routine i know are you guys routine people like do you guys have a set routine where you're like look i need to follow this routine in order to uh, uh be the most hundred percent in my life <laughs> i don't know that i'm a routine person i'm definitely a schedule based person mm-hmm. like i need to see have things outlined for me i'm not spontaneous i can't do things on Outside of your schedule. Out on the go. Although, like, oh, God, I sound so boring. I feel like I, I can't, I'm, I'm open to just saying, fuck it, let's go to LA this weekend. But I'm also, like, I have things Priorities. that I need to be prioritizing. Mm-hmm. And I and I don't know that I can make that just yet. Like, I, I and to your point, I talked about this, I think, a few episodes ago. I actually mentioned to you, because when we got our nails done again, uh, we <laughs> talked about the five, mo- like, hobbies, pillars, whatever, like, uh, motivates you and keeps you go- sane in life that, like, your you life is around. This, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which was very similar to yours, I think, and exactly that chemical imbalance that you feel when mm-hmm. you're neglecting one and pursuing the other at 150%. Like, why can't everything just be at 100%? Um, so raining. for me, it's, it's more so just having everything more organized and outlined for me as opposed to a routine i have like a little routine in the morning when i get up i shower skincare coffee that's like those are day to day yeah. but like it's for in terms of like my week and month and life and planning ahead i just like to be schedule oriented you know what's crazy right looking in if i i follow both of you guys on instagram right mm-hmm. And Neela knows this. I'm a very, very free flowing kind of dude. I'm a mm-hmm. cruiser, right? I cruise through life. Mm-hmm. I, I avoid the BS stuff. I look at everything like the ha- the glass is half full type mm-hmm. shit, right? Or half and, empty. Or half empty. Could be both. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like <laughs> I look at you guys' Instagrams and your social media, right? And I see greatness. And I'm not just saying this because I love you guys. I'm saying this mm-hmm. because... What's being portrayed is Ritzy Pabla and Neela Carey living their best life, living a life of you have it together, right? And I feel like that's the thing that discourages a lot of people Mm -hmm. from living their best life because they think everybody else feels amazing. And that's social media. Going back to that social media aspect, like everything is going great for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we don't normalize the setbacks and we don't normalize the little small nuances of of human beings Mm -hmm. and how you could fall off the wagon and then bounce back and and learn how to balance things and learn how Mm to um, fulfill the aspects of or the areas of your life that you kind of feel shitty about sometimes or you're not giving enough effort into and i think the reason behind that is is we're really seeing a lot of people that do seem to have it together so much neil and i were talking about this like the ace family right there's this huge family on um mm-hmm. youtube right everybody knows them everything everybody thinks they have this perfect family this perfect life this perfect house this perfect car and then you realize that the car is on a donut right now it's on a spare tire the house is leaking the this the that this the that and they don't know normalize the yeah. pitfalls and the setbacks and once we it's normalize true. those things we can have people grow from them right we can have we can learn it's it will be a learning experience for a lot of people so true yeah it's so just true. crazy to me bro we only we only focus on the you good know, stuff sometimes there's moments when i get vulnerable and i talk about like the you do and stuff. i see i see it and that gets more traction than like some that other things. inspires me so much because like i look at that stuff and i'm like dude i relate to her mm. or i relate to this person because i feel this way bro right. and i can have it all together like neela right she has everything together in my eyes right she has her family she has her work Aww. she has the podcast she has the makeup and still i'll find myself in these conversations with her where she's still trying to push the ante of mm. perfection of like that like True. i still need to do this and that's a great way to live honestly because or it you're, could just be like too much don't you sometimes feel like we're too hard on ourselves so hard. i bruh, sometimes literally me. always yeah, thinking like, like i can't turn off my brain sometimes me too, bro. Me i don't too. know how to relax how do other i go on it? vacation i don't know how to relax i don't know how to put it away i don't know how to lay down and take some sun i it's problematic i want to feel normal i want to have a personal yeah. life and i know that to a lot of people from the outside looking in it looks like i have my shit together you have your shit together which you know maybe granted but, like, for the most part but yeah but part, like yeah. there are some dark lonely days and For like sure. there are things that i can't control that happen in my life that i wish i could and and it's just like to everyone out there who thinks that they they can do it all like 
you can, but it's not going to be easy, it's not healthy you know. Too, and I and actually. I and, and shout yeah. out Mina, who I love you, and I you list she listens. Um, she recently texted us, and she was like, you know, listening to that episode where I was telling her the five pillars, and you have to, or I was telling the podcast, not her, yeah. about how like you feel like you you need to do it all, and sometimes you can. And she's like, it's wild that like you know, she was so she was relating, and a lot of people do feel that way. Like you can't really you think you you're accomplishing so much but you still feel so unaccomplished right. because you're giving something only 20 and the thing is that like when you do do it all and everything has 110 percent, it's not going to be perfected versus if everything had equally the same amount of time that you did fully with you fully being present mm-hmm. you know because you're you're trying to rush and i'm only giving it an hour to make up but that's probably an hour of a shit video i just made because i was rushing and just trying to get it done for the day it's like it's hard you have that uncontent feeling most days but it's just like you ne- we need to normalize mm-hmm. being okay with not always accomplishing it all too because we can't be perfect we're not right. superman like sometimes shit happens and and like the timing again i'm so big on timing i don't know what it is but like if i i, I was neglecting maybe you know makeup for a little bit but my career was was going through the roof at work mm-hmm. you know i was mm-hmm. growing cra- like crazy and now I'm content and I feel like I'm a little more established. So I have time to go back to makeup yeah. and maybe blow that up. So it just has to do with like moments, just timing yeah. moments, yeah. but also like give yourself the credit where it's due. Cause mm. it's okay. Like we, it, you can do it all. I'm not the person that says you can't do it all. You can do it all, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. There's going to be several different sit- setbacks and yeah. things, but it, what differentiates the people that are able to get past these things is that will to get past those things, right? right? That will to be like, hey, bro, fuck this. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Like I'm going to okay. do this. You Regardless, had a bad it's okay day. that it's okay. I feel like this. You, you had a bad day. It's okay. But keep going. And exactly. I need you to be present. Like, there's mm-hmm. times when yeah. I'm watching a movie and I'm like, enjoying the movie. But at yeah. the end of the movie, I'm like, I didn't do this. I didn't do yeah. that. I didn't do work. I didn't do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so anxious yeah. but then i'm like why did i feel this moment of feeling so anxious for 30 minutes i could have just been relaxing yeah. and then yeah. have those do those things the next day like i think there's so many things that we do to ourselves that we just need to just chill the fuck you gotta f- be able to <laughs> have a solid filter yeah for it, bro i'm telling True. you it goes back to being and a able backbone to, and, and a and, backbone and like a thick backbone. skin for yourself to also talk to yourself and tell yourself <laughs> it's okay yeah you had a bad day but tomorrow's a new day yeah, yeah. honestly exactly. a lot We're of people human. can't check out of that though it's a very very perfectionist hard thing. yeah yeah mm-hmm. to check out it of is. that when you have those mental lapses and you have like a moment of insecurity or, or a moment of like bro i cannot name you the amount of times that i have felt insecure about something that i'm doing or or sad or angry or whatever because i'm a human and i'm filled with these emotions right mm-hmm. and we all go through these emotions mm-hmm. but for some weird reason i am a very i I don't know if I was born with it or whatever. (laughs) I'm very easily unbothered. Like, I will feel these emotions, right? And then... Same, I love that. And then two minutes later, I'll be like, well... It is what it is. 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 (laughs) You can turn it on and off. But a lot of people struggle with that. You feel me? And I feel like that's a main thing when you come to this hypersensitive era that we're in that we were talking Mm. about earlier. A lot of uh, a lot of people cannot check themselves in and out of uh, those emotions. And I feel like that honestly differentiates the people who deem themselves successful in life. And when I mean successful is contentment and happiness. Mm -hmm. What I feel uh being successful is is not the amount of money you have of course everybody wants 35 million dollars in their account you feel me but my idea of successful uh, being successful is being happy with what you're doing Mm -hmm. and uh being able to filter out the bullshit so true so true great great and on that note ritika thank you for being here it's always such a good time and i and i loved all the energy um we love you we can't wait till you're back salute Cheers. If you're listening, <laughs> you can uh, watch us on youtube.com slash the Dima podcast and follow us on all platforms at the Dima podcast. Follow Ritika at Ritzy Pabla. Ritzy Pabla. We will link it below. And until next time, TDP. We out. We out. Peace.